You are watching a master at work. What is going on friends today? We're in the new studio. That of course being the case means that we're gonna be creating more content, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Today of course, we are gonna be looking at the GTEC Thunder. I don't even know if that's gonna happen every time. Let's get straight on into this one. So it's been about two years since I worked with GTEC. In fact, the contact that I had two years ago moved on to another company, of which I still work with. And at the time, the A10T, I think it was, which was basically a three color printer, was kind of their flagship model. So when they reached out to talk about the Thunder, and another printer called the Miser, which has closed loop step in and super speedy printing, I was intrigued. So this is how the box came with these two filaments as well. Now apparently these are a high flow filament for this particular style printer. Uh, I've got a bunch of information about that and well, I'll go through that now. GTEX HSPLA is a new high speed printing filament that has been optimized for use with high performance 3D printers. By adjusting the melting point and glass transition temperature of raw materials, as well as optimizing the production process, HSPLA offers improved fluidity, faster curing and forming speeds, and less susceptibility to deformation under high temperatures. Now that's quite a mouthful. This is certainly with tests compared to standard PLA. HSPLA offers faster printing speeds, higher quality prints, and smoother surfaces. So the box to me looks like it's been opened previously as I haven't had to actually undo the box at all, which is kind of interesting. Inside of the box, we have what looks like a GTEC thank you card, which is kind of nice. What I didn't realize as well was this printer was also a Kickstarter campaign printer, which as you know, if you're a frequent viewer of the channel, I'm not a big fan of Kickstarter campaigns, especially when they are from established businesses like GTEC, for instance, who have had several printers out over the years. So if you are thinking about buying this printer, it is definitely worthwhile checking out the Kickstarter campaign and seeing what they are up to. And the story very much begins in March 2020, where they conduct their market research. It's noteworthy at the time that the concept around closed stepper motors was already present, raising questions about the possibility of mass production. The narrative then moves on, of course, to September 2020, where GTEC looked to launch their product on Kickstarter. Now, the noteworthy information here is that it did raise $33,500 on Kickstarter with only a mere 82 backers. But of course it was a successful campaign and it has been fulfilled. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. PCBWay is a leading online platform for PCB manufacturing and assembly services. They offer high quality, low cost PCBs with quick turnaround times and a wide range of capabilities. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, PCBWay has everything you need to bring your electronic projects to life. PCBWay.com the Thunder, like many other hobbyist printers, requires some assembly before use. This includes attaching four bolts to the Z-axis and two T-bars with an additional 12 bolts. The assembly process is straightforward and necessary for ensuring stability during high-speed printing. After assembling the main parts of the printer, you can then plug in your stepper motors and bed leveling sensor. The overall assembly process is easy to follow and should take around about 20 minutes. Loading filament is also a simple process and the final steps including checking the power settings, inserting the SD card and leveling the bed for accurate printing. I found the build of this printer actually pretty easy as the guide has everything you'll need to follow the build to be successful. Once you've built the printer, you'll also then need to install the slicing software. This is on the SD card, and you'll be in luck if you're a Microsoft Windows user. If like me, and you're on a Mac, there are several ways that you can add this printer to the printer settings inside of Cura. However, so far I've been unable to do this on my Mac due to some sort of irregularities during my install. Slicing in my case has been served up on a Microsoft Windows laptop. If you're not keen on copying and pasting the files inside of the Cura file system, fear not, as this will update on the next Cura software release. This has also been confirmed by the Ultimaker development team, so if you're waiting for this printer to arrive, you might have an easier ride of it than I have. So what do you get inside of the printer box where you get your 250 grams of filament, a printer cable, some cable ties, these ginormous PTFE tubes, a mouse mat, a scraper, some of those PTFE glands, we get a number of spares, bits and pieces, tools, and also a few elements here that you can use to unblock the nozzle should you need to. And the nozzle is quite an interesting thing. So GTEx Funder does have a number of unique features, including closed loop steppers on the X and Y axis, fast speed printing of up to 300 millimeters per second, and a total of five cooling fans an all-metal framework, dual Zs, along with dual CPU control, of which one part runs the usual print elements, while the other one works the closed-loop stepper elements. 
It also has a relatively large building area of 250 by 250 by 260 on the Z. The printer has been sold on the early bird price of $399, with the increase of $489 later on. The design of the Y-axis is noted as being particularly efficient, allowing for faster 3D printing. So as soon as that fan kicks in, like it's just done now, it makes it almost unbearable to be in the room with. Not because it's a frequency noise or anything crazy like that. It just is so damn loud. On the closed loop test, it did successfully provide position feedback and control. However, the results will very much depend on what you're printing. In the case of the 300 millimeter per second vase model, well, it wrecked the print, but it did continue and it did finish the print. But just because it's fast, does it make it good? The tests using the high speed filament, which also has a shine to it, makes the prints look slightly better than they actually are. There is notable ringing on some prints, along with speed printing marks on overhangs. On the Fox print, I attempted this twice without supports, and on the tails, well, well, they both snapped off both times along the weak areas, and this was at different speeds. So I guess if you're favouring speed over quality, or even speed and quality over thunderous fan noise, I'd be putting a question mark over what I'm really looking to get out of this machine certainly over Core XY alternatives. While pushing the speed on bed slingers isn't new to the modified user, manufacturing one to max out the capable speeds is, well, still pretty interesting. A touch screen with some spelling mistakes, micro SD along with USB inputs, and more blow than Pablo Escobar. Did GTEC make a monster to a market that may already have moved on? Custom high flow nozzles, non standard cables, BMG clone extruder, slapping your print head around. Is this what my life's come to? So, in short, does this really push the boundaries of Marlin firmware printing at 300 millimeters per second on a bed slinger? I would say. Possibly not. I think two years ago this would have been a really, really good printer, but I'm not entirely sure if it fits in today's marketplace. Tonight, though, the Metaphys have a yellow weather warning in force for the risk of some thunderstorms. And of course, and as always, please let me know in the comments if this fits into your workflow. If it does, if it doesn't, I'm not entirely sure. But we will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. You are watching a master at work.